the final steps in our marketing management plan is to do a what if scenarios and then build our justification metrics. So basically, we're going to take the last two steps of this process and cover them in this video. And remember, you have your template, uh, your Excel template that you can use to actually go through these uh, last two steps as you've gone through the ones before. And so what do we, why do we do what if scenarios? Well, we do it for four main reasons. First off, we can't predict the future exactly. So as a marketer, I want to be able to see what's going to happen if, I do, if things don't go exactly as I plan. And so it gives us a bit of a hedge point to say, well, if we're a little off the, the predictions, we'll still be in good shape. Next, we want to ensure that we won't fail. So we're going to figure out a, what's called break-even. And break-even is a point where the revenue flow from a marketing program covers the marketing components of the budget, meaning then we are beginning to contribute to the profitability of the, of the company. So essentially, break-even means what is the worst-case scenario where at least I recover what we've invested in, into it. But we also want to know how much will happen if we succeed. So if we go ahead with the budget and it hits our scenarios, how much money will we make? So ideally, you want to have a low break-even, meaning there's a low um, point to where you're going to cover your marketing costs. But ideally, all of our scenarios will want to produce a very positive MROI, marketing ROI, so that we're contributing to the profitability of the company. We also want to determine when success will become a loss. And so I really want to understand as a marketer that is, is, the pro, is the program I'm putting together going to almost guarantee that we will be profitable in terms of the company because I don't want it to become a loss. So it gives us the ability to go through and put in some scenario planning to make sure that we're going to have a positive MROI for all of our programs. And so basically what we do is we calculate three what-if scenarios. We have a pessimistic one, an average, which is really what we expect to have, and then an optimistic uh, performance. And by putting those together, we want to keep it somewhat realistic. We want it to make sure that the Go Viral marketing plan is going to really determine how much we're going to do. For example, if we have a market of $2 million and we're only going to spend $100,000, our penetration isn't going to be very high. And so we want to make sure that it's basically, if we invest in this Go Viral marketing program, how much is it going to give us on average? And then optimistically and pessimistically. And you'll see as we go through class, a number of different uh, case studies where you'll see how they, this all comes together. And so basically what we want to do is to realistically as possible, determine these three performance levels. And so... What we have in a what-if scenario is we always have the total market, what I call the social market or the available market. Then there are several behaviors that we're going to have that are sort of our key KPIs. You've already established them in the performance funnels. So what we want to say is realistically, what is going to happen if we go through some different assumptions? In other words, what happens if uh, our marketing program, which brings some visitors to the landing page, is only 1% or 1.5% or 2% of the social market. And what happens if we vary the registration and vary how many sales will actually happen? We want to play those off to find out a scenario that, that seems good that will become our average one. Then we want to go a little above it and a little below it for our optimistic and pessimistic scenario builds to see how it's going to work. And so basically we will go out in the real world, we go out and we talk to um, our, uh, our agencies, uh, our digital agency, or we would talk to experts to say exactly how it will work. For class, we'll talk amongst ourselves and look at some past ones to develop what is going to be the key points in our what-if scenario. And so for each scenario, you want to calculate the number of each step in the funnel that you're going to be looking at. You want to identify essentially the uh, effectiveness KPIs that you're going to want to pull out and what's going to be the percentage between the, the current step and the prior step. And using average sales dollars, calculate the revenue that's going to be produced. 
And so this a good, would be an example from an IBM project we did. There was an optimistic uh, response rate, a, an average response rate, and a pessimistic response rate. And then they had performance funnels where they actually, some they kept pretty constant, some they had done some variation of it. But basically they said of the after the number of people hit the information exchange page, what are the number of people that are uh, do registration acceptably? Then how many come and use the website? And then how many make a product inquiry? You notice across the board for each of them, the only thing they varied was the marketing response rate. That is the general way we want to do it. But you can also play around with the numbers a little bit just to see where you would start to um, become a loss because you know how much you're investing in your go viral marketing program and in your budget. So that's really what we're going to play off. This is the revenue flows we generate. Um, this is another way of looking at it. Here's a total uh, funnel for a, a project. This is a passion market they're building for. Notice they've established what the revenue flow is going to be for a best case, a most probable case, and a worst case scenario. And you notice here they did vary some of the lower funnel options. So you have total flexibility to do it, but you want to make sure it's realistic in terms of the penetration rate and in terms of the revenue that you're going to generate. And so basically the break even is one of the calculations we're going to do for senior management. It's a point where we recover our marketing costs, which you've calculated in your in your budget, against the revenue flows that are going to happen based upon the program. And what you want to do is that basically this is the, the minimum amount of sales that we want to have to at least recover our marketing costs. We're not contributing to the um, profitability of the company, but we can figure out what the market penetration would be to yield at least enough money to break even. And so we can do this for both the full project and the pilot project. And it's basically the bottom line that we can do before, I don't know, maybe we get fired you know, for this, but it gives us our bottom line numbers. And so here's a, a, an example of a budget that a company did, you know, say they're spending 1.689 million for it. And then they said, okay, if there are 14 million moms and, and uh, you know, then what, what do we want to have for the break even? Well, we need to generate based on their economics of an average revenue per new customer of $2,200. We need to have at least 100 and uh, 712 in order to recover our marketing costs uh, that, that um, you know, you saw on the prior page. And so what it does, is it allows us to say this is the must-have coming out of the marketing program to at least recover our costs. The other thing now that we want to do is we want to calculate the, the uh, MROI, the marketing return on investment. So this uh, particular scenario is estimating at the bottom of the funnel it'll produce $2.7 million dollars in uh, revenue based upon a budget of 1.689 million. Therefore, we have this amount of incremental uh, contribution margin subtracting the two, which gives us a marketing return on investment of 162%. What you wanna do is to make sure that all of your scenarios should at least be contributing a positive or 100% or more marketing ROI and that the break-even is as low as we can make it so that it, it, it uh, really provides a good um, chance that it's going to be profitable as we go through and actually execute the program. And so basically, use the template to, to put together your uh, average, your uh, pessimistic, and your optimistic uh, numbers. Look at them and think about it as, is it realistic to see those numbers? And if you have problems, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to help you work your way through the scenario and the justification metrics.